Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to go over and compare the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season to the upcoming 2024 hurricane season once we get a st storm going. Will it be worse? Will it be similar? Could it be less? We'll discuss that in this video. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin, thanks to TropicalToBits.com, for Wednesday, June 5th, 2024. We're monitoring three tropical waves in the Atlantic Basin, one that's over South America, uh, over Suriname, and heading towards uh, Venezuela. Then we have two more in the main development region. But all three of those are not expected to develop in the least the next week or so. But we will continue to monitor them because they are packets of energy that can bring flooding when they move over your region and could also spin up the storm that we've been talking about in the Western Caribbean in and around the Central American gyro. Here's the vorticity, the spin and energy in the atmosphere associated with those tropical waves highlighted by our red box. Nothing to be concerned with right now as we sit there just low energy waves moving through, looking for a favorable environment to develop. National Hurricane Center is not expecting any tropical development in the next seven days, but like we've been discussing in our videos, there's the possibility beyond seven days that we could start to see the tropics fire up in the Atlantic Basin and potentially in the Eastern Pacific Basin as well as we get into weeks two and three of the month of June. And just like yesterday's video, this is today's model run, looking at both the European and GFS models. Pretty similar to yesterday, so we're really not going to discuss that too much. European is keeping the Central American gyra in and around over land or into the Pacific, whereas the American wants to develop it in the Western Caribbean, in and around the Yucatan Peninsula and Western Cuba. So no change there. Ensemble models are pretty much showing the same thing, so if we get anything new, I will discuss that in tomorrow's video. But where this storm could develop is not out of the ordinary. This time of year, between June 1st and June 10th, this is where we would see development. Western Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Eastern Pacific Basin. Second 10 days of the month. You can see the same thing, expands a little bit more eastward in the Atlantic, a little bit further westward in the Pacific. And then the last 10 days of June, same thing, we could start looking towards the main development region out in the middle of the Atlantic, where our tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa and potentially form out there. So in terms of where we are right now in the hurricane season, it's still early. Like we started officially back on June 1st. Today is only the fifth day of the season. Activity this time of year is typically low. I know in past years we've seen preseason activity or very early activity in the month of June. Typically, the first name system doesn't form until June 20th. Our first hurricane doesn't form until August 11th. And our first major hurricane towards the peak of hurricane season on September 1st. So how does that compare to our most active season that we've ever had in recent memory, and that is 2020. Well, in 2020, we had two named storms in the month of May before the season even began, but those were, uh, say, they were non-tropical that got names. They were subtropical storms that became tropical storms. They came off the east coast of the United States as mid-latitude systems, developed a warm core got a subtropical name and then eventually became tropical in nature as they went on off the east coast of the United States. The first true storm wasn't until we got to Cristobal, which came out about from the Central American gyro. So it, it, it too also didn't form from something tropical in nature, like a tropical wave. It formed from the tropical Central American gyro that was a very broad area of circulation and then condensed down and then and then went into the Gulf of Mexico. So then you have Dolly, which formed in the latter half of June, and that and then we were a little quiet. Then we had the uh, second week in July. We had Edward and Faye 
then it was quiet again. And then the end of July, we had a spur of activity with Gonzalo, Hannah, Isaias, and Tropical Depression 10 before we had one last lull period before the middle of August when we had Josephine and then boom, Kyle, Laura, Marco, Omar, uh, Nana, all in a row. Then we got into the peak hurricane season. You had Paulette, Renee, Sally, Teddy, Vicky, and Alpha, which all formed rather it, one after another after another. Include And then at the end of September, we had Beta and Wilfred. Then we had maybe a few-day period where we didn't have any storms. And we had, in October, Gamma and Delta. Then we had a break in the middle of the month. And then towards the end of October, we had Epsilon, Zeta, and then Eta. Then we had about a week's break, and then we saw Theta and Iota form in the middle of November. And then after that, finally... 2020 was over. So, how does that compare to this year? What are we looking at? The biggest culprit was two things. The La Nina in 2020, as you can see here on this sea surface temperature anomaly map, on June 4th, the La Nina wasn't officially official at that point. It was still forming, but you can see it was in the process here. And we had the above average sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic like we have in 2024. But notice one difference. Here we have shadings of yellow and light orange. This is June 4th of 2020. Here is June 4th of 2024. We still have that La Nina forming. Doesn't look right now as potent as the La Nina in uh, 2020 looked, but it's still there. It's in the process of forming, and that's going to reduce the wind shear in the Atlantic Basin, allowing for easier development of the tropical waves into storms and hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin. But look at that temperature difference. Those aren't those yellows. Those are oranges. Those oranges are reds and deep reds in the Atlantic Basin. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison for you to see. It is crazy different. I mean, if we got 30 named storms in the 2020 hurricane season, 31 depressions altogether, how many are we going to get in 2024? Here's a look at that track map from 2020. You saw all that activity. It wasn't just all out in the Atlantic. It, we were very busy. We had a record number of landfalls in and around the United States and through the Caribbean and Central America, with a lot of them being major hurricanes. I believe seven in total made landfalls somewhere in and around uh, land that year in terms of major hurricanes. So we have... A lot to worry about potentially this year like I said if this was 2020 and we have the sea sur ter surface temperatures that we see today versus what we had in 2020 which created this how many storms and tropical storms and hurricanes are we gonna get in 2024 deciphering weather made a forecast conservatively of 25 minimally I think we're gonna see 20 potentially we could see another 2020 season, maybe even more, if you believe the University of Pennsylvania's forecast of 33. Only time is going to tell. We'll still track the three tropical waves, as we discussed earlier in this video and in yesterday's video, where we'll track the Central American gyra to see if it forms on the Atlantic side or the Pacific side. If it forms on the Atlantic side, first name on the list is going to be Alberto, and we'll keep you informed of any changes in the models to let you know when that storm could form. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel and like what we do here, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you, and have a great day.